Hello and welcome to another workshop video log. So I'm going to give you a quick update of what's happening in the workshop and with our maintenance and restoration of classic motorcycles. Um, before we start, this video is sponsored by SysApp, the real-time GPS tracker and TripMate, which is a great little device uh, to add security and trip features to your cherished classic motorcycle. So we're going to do a separate standalone video on how that works, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, thanks to the guys from SysApp for sponsoring this video today. So what's been happening in the workshop? We're going to walk through uh, some of the ongoing projects, give you an update on those. Uh, there's been a little bit of progress since the last one. And we're going to finish with the latest acquisition, actually, which is a modern classic. Finally added one to the collection. It's under the cover here, so uh, what will it be? Well, we'll find out towards the end of the video. First up then, we've got MV Augusta here on the bench. Now, this is a bike that belongs to my dad. Um, he's done quite a bit of work on it over the past year or so, and it is a fabulous looking bike, cosmetically absolutely stunning. You can't fault it, almost concourse condition this one. Really pretty machine, 1957, uh, 175cc machine. Problem was, it wasn't running particularly well. Um, there's a, quite a bit of a knocking noise from the bottom end of the engine, so the bearings aren't right, either the main bearing or even the bottom end or the big end on the uh, bottom of the conrod. So we dropped the engine out, uh, but I thought we'd leave it on here because it's quite interesting to see it without anything in. You can see the design of it. These are hockey stick, or boomerang, sorry, rear part of the frame which is quite distinctive to these MVs and it's just a really pretty looking bike. The way they painted the frames all singular colour to match back with the mud guards and everything and the shape of that tank is really attractive. So nice to sit up on here. Engine is dropped down in the box here so you can see it. All alloy engine, four stroke, 175cc. It's a push rod overhead valve engine. Um, but quite a big lump, as I mentioned in the last video. You see the size of the, the head and the barrel on these, considering it's such a tiny little uh, capacity, but it's in there now. We're going to take that away and get it uh, stripped down and uh, see if we can get the bearings sorted on it and pop it back in to get it sorted for the road. So that's ongoing here on the bench. Then moving round, we've got our Honda Cub, which we showed last time. Now it's... Again, just a rolling chassis now. So we've dropped the, the motor out of this one. Um, this was just a case of getting it on the road uh, and running again. It hadn't it'd been stood a little while, hadn't been run. There's a few issues with the motor and cosmetically wanted to tidy it up. So we, we're happy with how this, this now looks. Um, we've left the original paint on it. We've not touched it. Just give it a good uh, clean up really. Then the motor's come out the cases on that were really scabby. Um, these are just sprayed. So we've gone over it, cleaned it up, given it a first coat of, uh, of heat, heat proof silver. The barrel I've given a lick of paint as well. Um, I'll go over it again where the overspray has gone. This just needs some lacquer on it now just to finish it off. Again, not concourse, but it's going to make it look really smart and usable going forward. So it won't take long to sort that. Get it back in there and see if we can get it running. Then, further along the bench, this is the, the main project for me. This is our 1931 HRD. So last time you were here, I showed you the barrel and the, some of the tinware on that, and we talked through it. So we've got the frame. We're going to start cracking on with putting the rolling chassis together on this. Front forks here. They need all the linkages. Uh, there's a spring that goes in there as well. Uh, all that putting back together. Spindles going in. There's quite a few components, actually, on these early... Um, early bikes. But the main point is to have a look at this. I think you find this interesting. This is what they call the triangular frame. So this was Phil Vincent's first design of a, of a rear sprung frame that he uh, patented in 1928. And you see how simple it is. Cantilever rear end, triangular. There'd be two spring boxes that fix here and here that go under there and it just basically pivots like that. So there's a uh, hollow spindle that goes in there two taper roller bearings that fit in there, and then a solid spindle through, and it just moves on those taper rollers. Um, simple as that. But it's a beautiful design, and 
what was interesting about these earlier Vincents was that they had this huge wraparound section here. So the engine's sitting in the heart of the frame and these bars come round it or frame tubes come round it like that. And you think about this, 91 years old, this was replicating or setting this design standard of bikes that we were seeing in the 70s, 80s, and even in the 90s. You think you're, you're sort of more modern bikes with a box beam section that's become just wrapping around the engine like that. I mean, he was doing this in 1931. So it's a really interesting design. All taper roller bearings as well. So the, the steering head will have those in. The wheel spindles have it. But uh, yeah, starting to put this back together. Put the down tube on there, head steadies on, rear frames in. Uh, we're going to fit the oil tank next, so that goes on with these straps and rubber mounts to fit in the frame around the back here. So just tuck in there and just sit in that section there, like so. Um, so we'll get those on there. I've cleaned up the oil tap there as well for this. So this is quite interesting because it's got a dial on it, so you can change the feed rate from this. Um, it's not a total loss system, so it will recirculate, but this helps control that. And it's quite handy because you can turn it down to zero and it will stop the oil flowing through and wet something. So that's a nice uh, period tap, beautiful bit of kit. So lots to do on that. We'll keep going on that. Hopefully next time when we do um, the next video log, we'll actually have part of the bottom end of the engine back, which we spoke about last time. So that's having some new bush um, bearings fitted. So that should be on the bench next time you come. Beautiful, cracking on with that. So the 78 Marini 500, um, all we've done on this, all I've done on this is fit the rear mud guard on there now to the chassis and the frame. The engine cases, as we showed on the last video, so there's a lot more, we spoke in more detail about this bike then. I've got the engine cases back at home now, waiting to go in the oven to fit the bearings back in. The bearings are all in the freezer. So you'll see more on that next time, but Check out the previous video if you want to learn more about the 78 Marini. Then we've got this brand spanking new Royal Enfield Hunter 350. Uh, thank you to the guys at Royal Enfield in UK there uh, for providing us with this. So we're going to do a review on this. So there'll be a video coming up on this one. And um, we'll see that soon. And then, exciting, oh, two new signs for the wall there, which I know Alex loves this one. A BSA uh, plaque here from uh, HJ Pugh Auctions uh, last week, which is a nice thing to have. So more trinkets for the room. But next door, the Model P, we've got a brand new tank that we're going to get sorted on it. So come and have a look at that. So here we have our now in the showroom. This was missing last time. So this was the one Vincent that we didn't show you because it was still in storage. This is a 1932 Model P fitted with the Rudge 500cc four valve engine. Now we did a video on this last year. You can check that out on the channel where you see me riding this, firing it up and talking through it. But we had an issue with this, with the tank. And the problem was that the, um, the paint was bubbling on the top of the tank, which meant there was some pinholes in it or an issue under the paint. It was the second time we'd had that problem. And uh, we had the tank taken off to my tank man, Alan Fox, who, uh, we've spoken about before and we had it soda blasted and stripped and you can see on the top here well there's a lot of filler in here but also you see all these sort of um, pop marks if you like or pinholes in the metal and that was what was causing because this is where the bubbles were coming through the paint so even though it had been lined it was still leaking through this had had some filler on it but the ethanol was still coming out of the fuel you can see there's even like holes coming in here it's all soft soldered around the top which is how they should be but um, the thought was, <laughs> the work involved in sorting this perhaps meant it wasn't going to be worth doing again because it's expensive jobs getting these tanks painted and we didn't want the same issue. So, I took this tank to a, a local firm, literally just around the corner, called uh, BK Sheet Metal Services in Hinkley. Jason Lee, who runs that, is a master craftsman at making metal panels for vintage pre-war cars, many MGs, Bentleys, that sort of thing. He used that as a template to make this. And here it is, a beautiful handmade steel tank. And um, we've just dry fitted it, dropped it on here to make sure we're happy with it. And it is superb, he's done a great job. Um, beautiful replica of the original, fits 
splendidly. So it's a little bit low at the minute because it's not got the tank rubbers on it underneath. So it will sit a tiny bit higher, but you, off, you can see the work on there. Let's just take it off the top. So you can see the, the work that's involved with that. I've got some photos that will come up so you can see what was, how I put it together, all the welding and uh, threads and everything underneath. But chuffed to bits with that, like I say, handmade the old fashioned way. And uh, in steel, a lot of the guys these days, particularly in the UK, only like making tanks out of uh, alloy because it's easier to work with. Um, but like I say, Jason and the guys down there have made it out of steel. So, got to get that off now to the paint man who will uh, crack on with that. So, she should be ready then for uh, riding and enjoying again in the springtime. So, really pleased with that. We're going to keep the original tank, obviously, because this is a genuine Vincent one. And it is actually stamped underneath. So, you can see a date on this one. And it was made in Coventry. So, uh, made by the firm in Coventry. This tank was actually made in 1933. Um, but yeah, so we'll keep that. Um, it's important to retain that. So there we are, really pleased with that. So now we have, uh, yeah, the Model P to look forward to in the new year, which is good. So we'll finish the video with this. This is the modern classic that we've bought to accompany our classic bikes. So we've been very fortunate on the channel to test ride the Motor Guzzi V7. We've had Triumph Bonnevilles, Bobbers, Speedmaster, Scrambler, Speed Twin. Uh, and we've had Royal Enfields with an Interceptor, Continental GT, the Classic 350 and the Meteor, and more recently the Hunter. So, We've test ridden all those. We've gone and bought one. What have we bought? Well, here it is. It is, yep, a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Get the cover off. There we are. There it is. Out of all the bikes that I test rode in the last 12, 18 months, modern classics, this was the one that I always preferred the most. And uh, myself and my dad, we've gone halves on this. And it's, it's not a brand new one. We actually picked it up, it's what, 20 months old. So it's a 21 plate. And we bought this from a guy locally, private sale. But absolutely adored this bike when we rode it earlier in the year. Fits the bill perfectly for, uh, for what I need for a, a modern classic to accompany the classic bikes. Absolutely spot on. So chuffed to bits to get this. Um, and if you're interested, we paid, what, £4,700 for this bike. Still got over a year of its warranty left on it. It's had its first service. Uh, brand new one with a chrome tank now is, what, 6700 So great price, great bike, chuffed to bits. Now, we are going to make some mods to this bike. So in future videos, you'll see what we do with it. And we've already been out and bought some parts to, uh, to improve it a little bit, if you like. So... We've got ourselves, um, first of all, a new exhaust. So Tech 2, or a Tech exhaust, two into one, which is this all stainless steel um, exhaust system, which two benefits from this, or three benefits really, is one, it's more durable because it's all stainless steel. Two, it will give better flow. So it actually improves the horsepower a little bit by about three or four horsepower, so some performance. Better sound in, it's a little bit louder. But the main thing is weight. So this system, compared to the standard one, is around 14 kilograms lighter. Each of these silencers are six kilos each. So the weight saving is pretty, pretty immense. So that, that's a, a big benefit, because the only criticism we did have of this bike was it's a little bit heavy, considering it's only a 650. So that would be a great improvement in terms of the weight and uh, Visually, I think it will look really good too. So that will be going on. Also, we're going to replace the standard shocks. We've got these tech shocks here, which, uh, again, give a better ride quality. They also give some adjustability on preload and on dampening, which is good. Um, and you can adjust the height a little bit as well. So we can get the height down just a shade, because it is a little bit high, this bike. from a dad who's a bit shorter than me. So... These will add an improvement. Pleased with those. We'll get them on. 
We've also got the adjustable foot pegs, uh, which give a bit more comfort and uh, positioning wise, more adjustability to get them exactly where we want. Again, another minor criticism we had when we test rode this is that they did seem to feel like they were getting in the way a bit if you were paddling along or moving the bike. This allows us to overcome that. They're a smart bit of kit as well, nicely finished. And um, we've finally got this, which is the booster plug. So this just gives a bit more fuel in lower down on the revs when we fit that exhaust system. Um, it just gives a better response, makes it run less lean, if you like, when it's uh, at lower revs, which improves the performance um, and the manners of the engine, if you like. So that'll be going in as well. Oh, and uh, so we actually got all these bits from a friend who had an intercept for a while. So we bought these second hand as well. We were chuffed a bit. So the exhaust we got for 150 pounds. I think they're 340 uh, or thereabouts new. These we picked up for 120 off eBay. Again, hardly used. I think they were on a bike for five months. And we paid sort of 60 pound for the booster and 50 pound for the pegs as well. Again, from a friend who had previously owned an Interceptor. But these parts are all available from Tech, so check out their website. They make some great bits um, and accessories for bikes like the Interceptor. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video log. We'll be doing another one in the new year, and uh, we'll see you then.